Good morning, Jonathan Braun here with Gen Egg. We're here this morning to do an in-depth trading on our horse glacial planters. We're going to go through the preseason checklist, full operation with the monitor of the physical aspects of the machine, folding, unfolding, and all of the different operations. All right, so we're gonna go through the main functions where an operator is gonna spend 85, 95% of his time. So this is the main screen right now, and as you can see, it's got a great big red stop sign. Right now, the planter is turned off. So no matter what you do, nothing's gonna happen right now. You won't even be able to lift or lower the toolbar because when it's turned off, uh, all your, your solenoids are shut off. Right over here is your first main screen. And you have up top here, you have your manual controlled sections. Then you have your information screen. This is your main power button here. This would toggle your vacuum and fan screen. And then you air over to the second of your main screens that you will use most of the time. And here you have something that we call Delta Step and I'll explain that later. And then your third main screen are some of your other functions where you're setting target rates. You got some test screens in here and you can monitor your amperage, your diagnostics, and then your wrench screen, which takes you into your configuration. So these, these are the three main screens that you're going to be on 85 to 95% of the time. Right now you can see on our main screen, all these X's represent rows that have been turned off because on our test stand, we're only running one row. So right now you can see one active row. And when we hit our power button here, the stop sign goes away and now our maestro's turned on, all the electronic functions will start to function. So this is an important button. That is your main power button for turning the entire maestro off and back on again. Here on our Touch 800 main screen, we have the main screen that you'll see most of the time. Here's our power button when we press this. Now the monitor is turned on, the, the maestro is actually turned on itself. And so you can see the screen changes. You get different information coming up on the screen and the stop sign is gone. So now you know that the ECU is functioning. When we flip over to um, this screen here, you, you won't do too much on the screen. Again, I'll explain that a little more later. This is an important screen. At the top here, you see this icon represents a row unit. This is a target or a bullseye. Logically, then you go in here to set your targets. Any number you see in red is a number that can be changed, can be edited. So in this case, you can change your, your target rate or grades per acre. Anything in blue is, will, will respond to anything that we change in red. So for example, right here, it says 3.3 inches. So that would be the distance between the seat and the row. Obviously, if we change our target, let's say we drop this by half, it should double our seed spacing, and now we're at 6.6 .6 inches apart in the row. So the blue number changes in response to the change we make to the red number, but we can't directly change that blue number. Anytime you see a red number, it's a number you can edit. Anytime you see a blue number, it's a responding number, but you cannot edit that number directly. This button here shows a field and a bin. This is where your residual quantities go. This is where when you press this button, you have an opportunity to change the number because it's red. And this number is in TGR, thousand grains. So whatever number you put in here, you have to divide it by a thousand. So if we're going to put, let's say a million seeds in this bin, we would only put 1000 as an entered number. And now it says 1000. Now it says 1000 T, which is another thousand. So that's a million grains are in the tank. So now we have a million seeds in our residual quantity. When we go back to our target screen, now it gives us, see this blue number has changed in response to the residual quantity we entered. Now it tells us how many acres we will get at 32,000 grains per acre when we have a million seeds in the bin. It's very simple. It's a million divided by 32,000 gives us 31.3 acres on that bin. If we go back into here, and let's say we change this number to 3,000. Now we've, we're telling the computer that there's 3 million seeds in the bin. 
Now when we go back here, now we're getting 93.8 acres on that fill. It's very simple. We've tripled the number of seeds we told it was in the bin. Now it triples the number of acres we're going to get on that fill. And it will literally count back from your residual quantity one seed at a time as you plant that field. When you look at your screen at times, you will see this icon here up here. This is a picture of a maestro. It is your maestro home screen. It'll take you back to your main data screen where you can select between the three main button options. We've gone through our, our target screen. So, we, so far we've covered target setting and residual quantity. If we tap on this one here that says test, now what it does is it pulls up all of the different meters on the planter. And you can see when you scroll down, this arrow here will move as I press the down arrow and I can select individual rows. And I can turn them on. And if you listen, you'll hear the meter starts to turn when I hit the on button. So what you can do from this screen is test each individual row. If you press this button here where it shows multiple row meters, you can test all your rows at the same time. In this case, we only have one row, so you can hear the row running again on a 24 or 36 or 47 row planter. All of the rows would turn one revolution. So what this allows you to do is from the cab, either test individual rows or prime the rows or test all of them, prime all of them. Here we have another test button, which allows you to run that meter at a simulated speed for, I believe it's 30 seconds. And what it does is it gives you a readout on your variability of coefficient, your doubles and your skips. Right now we're showing a hundred skips because we have no seed. So all that's telling you is how many seeds are passing by the seed sensor for a given amount of time or given number of revolutions. We turn that off and it stops. So again, you also get a, an amperage reading on this screen. We're only pulling half an amp on this meter. It's very low. That's what it should normally read. It'll normally read between 0.5 and 1.3 amps. Anything between 0.5 and 1.3 is normal. Anything between 0.5 and 1.3 amps is considered normal. Obviously, the amperage reading will go up as your population goes up because your meters turn faster your amperage reading will also go up as you travel faster in the field because your meters turn faster. Certain seed varieties that have more friction or come off the disc a little bit harder will also increase your amperage draw. But just keep in mind that anything up to 1.3 or 1.4 amps is normal. This arrow is always arrowing over to another set of buttons. This arrow is a back arrow. From here, if we arrow over, now what we're showing is our amperage readout per row. And of course we can select which row we want to look at by moving the arrow up and down. But this is just an observation screen. Again, the numbers are all red. All we can do is observe information here. And from here we can arrow over and we're back on the initial function test screen. From here we're going to press our back arrow and go back into our main screen again. So we've covered the main screen, which is here with the power button. We've covered um, our test screens. <laughs> you might think these two numbers would always be the same, but it's not the case. Your actual area covered is how many acres you've traveled with the planter toolbar in the planting position. The sowed acres is how many acres you've actually planted. Those numbers will vary a little bit because even when your planter is in the down and planting position, your row units will turn off and on as you cross over into planted area. And those rows as your planter narrows, as rows are turned off, you're not planting acres on the entire width of the toolbar. And so your area will always be slightly higher than your sowed. And that is actually, if you like data, is an opportunity for you to calculate actually how much seed you've saved because you have not overplanted. Good information screen, but it's the next screen, the next few screens that are important. Um, this is the screen that shows you, you can see the little two dots there and the, the gap here. We often refer to that as doubles and skips and you get a percentage. Well here, it's a high percentage, 52% doubles, 45% skips. Well, this meter is running without any seed. It'll obviously show 
very high skips. Here it shows you 12,000 point, 12.6 thousand. Last column shows you thousand grains per acre per row. Since we only have one row, all of the seeds that have gone through this one row planter have gone through that individual row. This is important as well because when you're planting, it gives you an opportunity to look at how many seeds are going through each individual row of the planter. And these will all be quite similar, obviously, because all of the rows theoretically are planting the same number of seeds, except when you're turning, the outside rows speed up, the inside rows slow down, and the outside rows are going to plant more seeds. So you'll see, depending on which way you travel, either the lower number rows planting more seeds or planting less, depending on if you're going clockwise or counterclockwise around the field. Let's say, for example, you do three passes on the headlands and you go counterclockwise every time. The right side of the planter is traveling faster more often than the left side. And you'll see the higher number rows, which is, let's say, 28 to 31, as an example, with a higher seed count, which is perfectly normal. So, again, it's as you start to look at these numbers and you start to track patterns, it gives you an idea on performance. The more you get used to this screen, the more you get used to these numbers, the better you're able to interpret what's happening with your planter. Skips and doubles are something that has to be interpreted as well because those numbers are going to change depending on the crop that you're putting in, whether it's corn, soybeans, canola, edible beans, whatever. Uh, different seeds will pass the sensor and be read differently. And again, the information has to be interpreted but this is a good place to start tracking the patterns and different things that are happening with your planter. We skip over to the next screen. Uh, we're back to screen one. So again, just to refresh, we're gonna hit the home button. We're gonna go to the I for information. Within information, there's two pages. Here's the first page. There's the second page. I tend to spend a lot of time on these pages when I'm planting because I like to know what's happening with my planter. I like to track patterns. And if you are tracking patterns, you, you can start to see, for example, let's say row number nine here, and it's sort of closer to the middle of the planter. Row number nine and row number 10 and row number 20 should all read very, very nearly the same thing. And if I start to see row number nine is lagging behind, and it's really starting to lag behind, like more than let's say five or 10%, I know there's a problem. 99% of the time, the seed sensor is dirty, needs to be cleaned, and it's not reading all the seeds going by. So that's one thing to understand, again, you have to interpret the information just because that row is showing a low seed count doesn't actually necessarily mean it has a low seed count. It's a good indication this time to get out and clean your seed sensors. And obviously if one is dirty, the rest probably aren't far behind. That is one of the number one things. I use this particular results screen for is to determine how accurate my seed sensors are reading the seeds going by. Again, you start to understand what these numbers mean the more time you spend on the planter and looking at these screens.